Epilogue. Exit music. Monday, 5th of November. A year later, actually. The sun is beaming violently through the window, piercing my still weak and unadjusted eyes. Instinctually, my body flinches in discomfort. I sigh to myself. Get up. It's time to get up. Pinching the bridge of my nose, I clamber out of my sleeping bag and sit on the rug, legs outstretched. My eyes wander to the walls, surveying my familiar surroundings, trying to gather my bearings. I look to the calendar, laying on the coffee table, to get a grasp on what day it is. Who am I kidding? I know exactly what day it is. I can't stay asleep. Oh, right, I had wanted to... Where was it? I didn't go that far in here already, did I? Eh. Let's see. I never turned my lights off. Oh. No, that line actually doesn't even enter the history. Okay, I guess we'll never know what that said. I don't want text boxes, everyone. If you're gonna have them, slow down your text. Can't stay asleep. Can't see it again. So, it's time to get up. Whoop. Did that one go into the history? Sluggishly climbing to my feet, I... <sighs> drop back onto the ground, a sharp pain shooting up through my foot. I wince as I reach over and run my hand along it. Shit. Needle. I was right! I very slowly eased the thing out before angrily lobbing it away from me. That needle was in his carpet for a freaking year. For fuck's sake. I wipe a few drops of blood away and stumble into the kitchen. Prozac and citalopram. Hello again. I quickly gulp them down. At least the water relieves my dry throat. Now. Today is the day. I promised myself today. Who knows? Maybe something will change. Maybe a part of me will move on, and I can finally start healing like they all said I would. Maybe. There's only one way to find out. Trailing specks of blood across the carpet, I find myself outside the room. I don't even know how long it's been since the last time, but I need to do this. If I avoid it forever, nothing will ever change. Now, a hand that might be mine grips the door handle. Gently pushing it, I step into my bedroom. Hmm. It's quiet. Of course it's quiet. There's no one else here. There's no one else here. The smell of must and stale air hits me like a wave. Pushing forward, I find myself near the bed. My hand rests on its cushion as I met with a violent creak from the rusted springs. Well, what did I expect? I find myself staring at the closet door. Continual glances as I find my way around, as if I expect something to be there. I approach the nearby dresser, hoping to find what I'm looking for. My finger traces along its dusty surface, falling towards the adjacent drawers. I attempt to pull a drawer open. As I pull it towards me, it creaks like nails on a chalkboard, eventually getting stuck. I consider just ripping it out with all my strength, but there's something about this room. A time capsule of better days. And the single worst. I need to preserve it as it is. Instead, I try to gently ease the drawer open. It takes a bit of work, but... Just enough light peeks in so that I can see it. My hand fits through the narrow gap and I get a grip on the paper. Taking care to avoid creasing or ripping the paper, I gently retrieve it. I know it's painful, but my mind can't stop me from looking. I carefully unfold the paper, hands shaking, and read it over once more. Exit music. So there we were together, a white room by a window, where the sun came through. No matter how it ended, no matter how it started, I wanted nothing but the best for you. Your tiny hands, your crazy kitten smile, everything was perfect, if only for a short while. But it all came crashing down because you had to leave. And now that you're gone... I sit on the bed to regain what composure I've lost. I stare out into nothing, trying my hardest to avoid reliving it all. Of course, I fall short. It's not working. It doesn't help. I never should have come back here. I'm leaving. I carefully place the poem back in the drawer. Reaching the door, my head goes blank. I'm overcome with... a sick, morbid curiosity. Every step a mile, I trudge over to the closet. Even touching the handle brings bile to my throat. But, even so, I pull it open. 
nothing. I put myself through that for nothing. Wait, what is that? I find a slip of paper wedged in the closet door track. Why? No. I lean down on one knee before falling onto the other. This can't be what I think it is. It can't. I pick it up. Let's see. I can't, I can't, I can't. I, this is the... I wish I'd asked you if you believed in God, because right now I really wish I did. I, you still... Even after everything, I don't want anything to happen to you. Please take care of yourself. Tell my friends I love them. I've been thinking about this for a while, and it's my only way out. I'm never going to live a normal life, not after the shit I've been through. I was always powerless. Powerless to stop Dad. Powerless to escape. Powerless to keep my life and give to myself. And powerless to really change anything. Sometimes taking control is the last thing you can do. And that's what this is. I finally have a choice. So that's why. I love you. I'm sorry, Hallie. With the utmost care, I shut the closet door. Back at the desk, I rip the drawer out with what little strength I have. It clatters to the floor. Grabbing the poem, I stumble my way out of the room, tears streaming down my cheeks. I'm going. So, end of the line. I throw my beanie out over the ledge. There's nothing left for you here. Not anymore. Because of you. I throw the Tupperware box containing the shards of the mug. It's your own fucking fault. You're just delaying the inevitable. So get it over with. I go to throw my phone. I stop. And turn it back on instead. I don't know how long I spend staring at the lock screen image. Stop stalling it. Just a couple of terrifying seconds in exchange for an eternity of bliss. Don't think about it. Do it. Fucking do it. Now. Holly. Oh, Jesus. Sayori. Hey. I thought I'd find you here. How? I always find you here. I saw you leave the house. She approaches, glancing over the bridge and out to the sea. I say nothing. It's been a while. I haven't seen you in a few days. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. She turns to me, clearly concerned. You can talk to me about these things, you know. I don't want to push, but I'm just worried. Seriously, I'm doing okay. Just, you haven't come up here since August. I didn't know that you were having thoughts then. Sayori, you know I don't like talking about it. Please, I'm fine. I just... I don't know, I thought I'd come here for old times' sake. Okay, I'm sorry. She sighs. Ellie, I don't know what day it is. That's why I tried to call you. Sorry. I know her 18th was a disaster. But you got through that, didn't you? Yeah, by a hair. And a visit to the hospital. We were all there for you then. But it's just you now, isn't it? Siri shakes her head. I know you don't want to hear this, but... It's not my fault they moved on with their lives, Hallie. They have stuff to be getting on with. And God knows we both need to do the same thing. Look, Hallie, I was doing some math, and... We... we could move away if you wanted. Far away from here. Be roommates, rent a apartment, or a house or something together. I wouldn't mind doing that with you. I just... Things don't have to be this way, Hallie. Things can always change. I want to help you feel better. But I can't do that if you keep closing yourself off to me. I mean, Jesus, Hallie, I've been your friend since diapers. You saved me from... You know... I'm just trying to say that... You're my best friend. And I love you. Please, just talk to me. Anything, please. She pauses, her bleeding eyes red with barely contained tears. Her hand is on mine, sharing the metal rail. 
I continue to gaze out into the ocean, the afternoon sun splashing my face. Siri turns away, a gut-wrenching sob coming from her. Holly! It was my fault. Siri stops completely. Everything was. Okay, maybe not everything, but everything that mattered. I... well, the relationship wouldn't have lasted anyway. I came to terms with that a while ago. It's not that. But what happened? That was entirely my fault. I called the cops. I knew it was the one thing she couldn't handle, and... I did it anyway. I mean, fuck. I had no choice. My house had been ransacked. I couldn't just let that slide. It was a lose-lose situation. Hell, I was the one who dragged her into the whole thing. When we first talked about it, she tried to tell me that just waiting until she could legally leave would have been a sensible option. But I was so stuck in the mindset of, we have to fix this now, that I convinced her to go along with my stupid fucking plan. A plan that amounted to kicking the hornet's nest by running away and hiding with me. She was right. I should have just listened. The person I loved the most. Hell, not even just loved. Her life was in my hands. And I killed her. She's gone. Because of me. And yet, I can sit here and talk to you all day about how I know that now. And we can cry and tell each other how much we mattered to each other. And you can give me false reassurances and tell me about how it wasn't my fault, even though it was. And we can keep meeting like this, over and over, until something inevitably fucking happens. It's bullshit. None of it matters, Sayori. She is never coming back. I begin to slowly back closer to the edge. I know you're fed up with me. You should be. And I know I can't keep doing this to you anymore. I'm dragging you down. You don't do that to people who love you. I learned that the hard way. You deserve better than that, Sayori. My heart slows to a crawl. I can't move on, but maybe you can. Holly! It gets nearer, the salty wind blowing at my face. Holly, what are you doing? Don't blame yourself. I shove her off me hard enough that she loses her grip. I hope she's not hurt. She stumbles back, catching her footing. I run for the ledge. She can't keep up. My next step meets air. I hear her scream echoing above me out into the distance. Sayori, I'm so sorry. Not sc
Dear player, thank you dearly for playing our mod. We hope it hit as hard as intended, and we hope it was worth the wait. I do not feel prepared to write this in the slightest, yet here I am. This mod has been a monolithic figure in my life for the last 18 months, and it's followed me from college education to employment and all the shit in between. It's hard to imagine a time where EMR wasn't lying in the back of my mind, so I guess I'll have time to adjust. But it's finished now, thanks to you and thanks to my team. And where to start with my team? You're all awesome, and it is always a pleasure to make cool shit with you. Unfortunately, there's nowhere near enough space on this page to get a word in from all of Wretched, so we've put together a PDF so everyone who wants to get their opportunities, or wants to, gets to have the opportunity to speak. Yeah, you can find that in EMR's base folder. It should be there now on the off chance you're interested. Also, in case you missed it, we have an active Discord server going a thousand members strong. We're fun, we promise. And with that, a weight has been lifted, and I've finally made peace with this fucking mod. By the way, you might want to head back to the main menu. We left a little something for you. With love, Oliver and Wretched Team. And there's their site thingy.